everyone. So something pretty special happened last night. Um, after kind of a few years of looking at these broken dictaphone transports that I've got um, left over from the U-Tape Scrubber project, um, yeah, some of these I had to kind of sack off because the, the, the heads on them were dead. There's also two different types of heads. Some of them had other mechanical problems with these, um, you know, tape mechanisms. And, you know, I was building up a bit of a pile of them and I thought well what can I do with them and it's strange how long it can take for these kind of things to solidify in your mind you know I'd often just take these and place them on panels and try different strange configurations something that I was really quite keen to do for a while but uh, here's a box of some other ones um, was this you know use two machines and then have a loop kind of made between them but when it's right, it's right. There's something about aesthetics and beauty which, uh, you know, we really can't quantify um, or uh, qualify with words, really. It just, when it's right, it's right. And I sat back with this sort of configuration on a panel and it was like, I can't explain, like the waves on a, on a you know, a very turbulent sea just settled. And for the first time, I was able to see how this was going to work. Um, I've always been really impressed by the Space Echo configuration of tape heads. Um, it actually works kind of the opposite way to most traditional tape machines in that the information or the magnetic kind of, you know, uh, audio is um, data is stored on the inside. And it's very like Wu Wei, this approach, because... Uh, you know, if we look at nature and um, humans make everything square, whereas nature is squiggly and wiggly and curvy. And, you know, it's like the one you tape rack. I love the thing, but I'm fighting everything with it. Um, it wants to be a circle. And so by using this Space Echo style head configuration, um, this one I've gone absolute ham on it. I've got an erase. Uh, record and then free playback heads and these are the free playback outputs um, and I'll start fitting up the circuits and wiring them later but what I wanted to show everyone today was I, I think in terms of the transport I, I can't believe how much progress I made in just one evening once I lay them out in this way I actually used a jam jar to get that circle which um, perfectly linked up uh, this tape path and um, people might know that you can break out of tapes um, to make longer loops by cutting into the housing and making it possible to kind of thread the tape out and make it longer. Um, and then when I coupled this with what I've seen with the tape um, mechanism in a Space Echo, the way that it will use a tensioner um, or something that creates drag before the heads, and the, and the tape is essentially pulled over the heads, um, it means that if you've ever looked inside a big space echo, you have this area where uh, the tape is flapping around, kind of finding its lowest en energy confirmation um, in this very like psychedelic kind of way. I mean, what I love about this is, you know, I, I keep talking about this Eurorack, but Eurorack's like an analogue of... It it's attempting to be an analogue of nature, you know, we're, but there's something missing. It's not the real thing you know even like when we name something it's not the name is not the thing it can never be the real thing with this i mean i'm really i feel like it's playing with nature rather than trying to create an abstract kind of analog clinical um model of it, it, it we're really playing with the things and when i got this going um no equation that i know of could predict the way that this is moving. This is like beyond kind of what we're doing and yet the tape will keep going round and it will just find its own place. Out at the moment the loop is obviously a lot larger than this circle. I think I could go even further. I did some modifications to uh, take away the inner wheel because we're not going to need that. I think I'm going to add a rubber to this one. As you see it kind of pulls the tape down and into this section. And then I've used some spacers to kind of stop it from tangling in different ways um, after kind of sitting and watching uh, when it failed. So, you know, this is, 
I think the start of something beautiful. Um, you know, rather than trying to, I think I've got, let's see if I've got one around here somewhere. Rather than trying to, you know, create a tension, this is the 1U tape rack prototype, which I was going to do all in one. And it works great, but um, it's always been a balance between tension and kind of friction and all these things. Because I'm fighting it, it's not what it wants to be. It's not a circle. Um, you see, the way I was uh, engaging the kind of tension on this capstan was with a manual uh, pressure wheel. On, by using these transports and recycling them, I already have that built in. So, you know, that's something that I don't have to worry about. By using the tape, I've already got a kind of uh, capacity for this extra overflow, which means that we don't need a tensioner. So, although the, you know, I, I mean, I'm showing you that I'm getting well ahead of myself. I've not even got this rigged up playing, but I can already see that this has some serious potential for a Europe module and it's going to be an alternative to the copycat style configuration which has the uh, you know the heads in the opposite configuration um, that style you know it means that I can do something that is actually new so um, I hope this has kind of been it's a bit rambly but as you can tell I'm really excited about this um, for the first time in a while I feel like I'm back on the the right path or back on the right track so um thanks for checking this out and um hope you found it interesting if you have any questions just leave them below cheers now bye